everyone, I have decided to do a picture from this book here. This is the Ink House by um, Rory Dobner. Now I coloured in this first picture, Ooh, it's hard to open the book, um, and I did a step-by-step, -step <coughs> excuse me, um, photo um, tutorial for this on my website, just because I coloured it at a time when I couldn't record, um, it was too noisy in the house, and I was really desperate just to get on and colour a picture, and I thought I would share it with you, so I did a um, photo, step-by-step -step photo tutorial, so that's that one, but I haven't coloured any more yet, but I thought I would have a go at this page today, I'm just going to hold the book open, I think, there we go, um, I thought I would choose a fairly simple page. So we have the pair of shears, the bee, and the um, plants. So I thought I would do the shears and the bee and a little bit of the plant, share my ideas, and then finish it um, on my own. I'm going to just put a piece of something behind the page. I have a piece of post box here, which uh, works in this book. Uh, protect the page behind and um, we do have a gap in the cover of course um, which could be tricky for leaning on but I think this is okay because it's quite a long way through the book I'm going to zoom in now a little so we can get started oops let's move the book down I think we'll do the bees and the shears as I said first and uh, <clears throat> then I'll just give you some ideas about what I'm doing for the uh, for the leaves and branches and I will share a completed picture with you. So um, the shears I'm going to start with. Now I'm thinking wooden handle um, metal um, blades so it's quite straightforward. I'm using my um, Faber-Castell Polychromos just because um, this is such a special book and um, I know them much better than my other pencils so and I know I can get a sharp point because there's quite a lot of small detail here to do um, that's the only reason it's, that you can use any um, pencils of course so I'm going to start with the wooden handle part of the um, shears I'm going to use my Bistra to uh, do a little um, base layer so this is quite light now the good thing with this is that we have the um, lines sort of drawn on already for us to indicate that there's some sort of wood grain here going on so we don't need to add that in ourselves and actually a lot of the pictures in this book although they look quite complex because there's a lot of um, shading and detail in there it means it, it's almost like a grayscale book in some areas where you can just add a little bit of colour and there's a lot of the work is actually done for us. Now you could leave it like that, I just want to add a little bit of the a darker brown so I'm going to go for I think the walnut brown, I don't know how well that shows up, I think um, probably not too well and I'm going to go around the edge just a little bit on the top edge, a bit more on the bottom and then just thinking about the fact that it will have more shadow down here and on this little bit here which is a separate part I'm just going to put a bit on each side and hopefully it's quite small quite tricky to get that to show up very well I'm just going to come in from that side I hope um, you can see and put a little bit along the top edge and then more along the bottom say a little more on the handle. Now we are actually colouring over part of the B, um, which might need going over with a bit of black actually, just thinking about it. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there and go on to the blade part. Now I tend to use a cold grey if I'm doing metal because I think that um, gives more of a silvery look. I want them to look fairly silver. I'm going to start with my darkest shade. Um, I think I'm going to pick this one. This is the Cold Grey 6. And do the areas where I think it would be darker. So near to the handle, we have already got some lines drawn in here to guide us, so that's quite useful. So just put a, dark, a touch here and here. A little under here and a bit here like 
there and then on there. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I'm going to go down a couple of shades. I find that's usually a little easier. So we're going down to cold grey four. I'm thinking this is quite short. It's, uh, Hopefully my sharpener is going to behave better today. It's uh, I clean the blade off by sharpening a normal graphite pencil in it. That seems to have helped. What I want to do here is to make it a little darker on each side. I'm going to try and get a bit of shine into the middle. But I'm also extending those areas that we colour dark. And I'm going to think about what to do here a little bit along there Oops. maybe a bit on that side too like that and then we're going to go down i think more to be a bit pale we'll try cold gray two it may be a little pale i may decide to go up to a three okay and again just extending some of the color a little bit under here i think and don't, I'm going to leave some white areas. I'm trying to show you, it's, the shadows aren't brilliant, are they? So there's a little white area here. And on this blade, I'm going to leave it in the centre. Like that. I'll come around this way. I think that's the best way for you to see on this one. Again, I'm going to leave it on the centre. like that and hopefully it looks a little bit shiny I'm not sure how well that's showing up on the camera to be honest but anyway I think I put a little bit extra on there now while I've got this um, light colour in my hand I'm going to do these wings I'm going to just put a more of a layer here near the body now they're overlapping I'm trying to work out I think this one is underneath, slightly there, and just lighten it towards the tip so there's only the faintest bit. I think I made a mistake by putting a bit in there when that's actually supposed to be white. So I'm going to go in with my eraser, just take that bit away. raises quite nicely like that now the bee's body we need him to be nice and yellow and to look nice and fat and furry I think so <clears throat> I'm actually going to start with a yellow sometimes I start with browns or oranges but I'm just going to go straight in with a yellow this is the light yellow ochre. It's quite a brownie yellow still, so I think it will help us to um, give a little more depth. But he's looking very, uh, very fat and furry, which I like. So put a little bit at each end, like this. There we go. And then a lighter shade. Um, I think we we'll use this one. Mm, yeah, we we'll use this one. It's it's quite light. It's uh, it's a teeny weeny one though, so I have to look it up um, for you. <clears throat> it is the Naples yellow. I thought it was. So we're going to bring that yellow in a little more. on that bit as well at the bottom we're going to pull that right round and then we're going to do a more vibrant shade um, I'm just looking and thinking probably um, yes probably this one this is just the um, cadmium yellow I'm just going to sharpen them because we've got quite a small space. We do want to leave an area that's still white. So overlap slightly what you've done already and just draw in a little bit, leaving a slightly white 
area in the centre. If you think the area is too large, just leave it for now and uh, have a look in, sit back and have a look and have a think whether you need more. But actually, I'm happy with that. You might not be, you might want a little more. It's up to you. Now, I've got to think about the, um, the leaves. Let's zoom out for you. So we've got a whole tangle of leaves for the rest of the page. Now, there are different options that we could take. We could do some pastel background, maybe not on the centre, but all the way around in a sort of green to, to, for leaves, which I think I might do. But before that, I'm going to colour in all of the leaves. Now, I want my stems or, or branch bits, I think, to be green um, as well as the leaves. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. But I have this greeny brown colour. It's called, um, I think it's called, I'm trying to work out what it's called, something green yellowish. You're all shouting at me if you know your polys. It is uh, earth green yellowish, of course. So I'm going to use that for the, um, the stem. So I should do a little bit to show you. Um, where shall I go? I want some leaves as well. Um, let's start here. I know it's a strange place to start, but then you can just get an idea of what the colour looks like. Okay. And so I would do all the uh, branches like this. Okay. And then a little bit on the bottom of each leaf like that. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've got a bit of a croaky throat. I don't know why. And for the rest of each leaf, I will use my um, earth green. Hey. Eh? How that can't be earth green yellowish. That's earth green yellowish. Um. 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 Uh, that's olive green yellowish, sorry, and that's earth green yellowish, so it's the olive green yellowish first. I'm sorry. If you've used the wrong colour, don't worry, you can go over the top with the other one, erase it slightly, or you can just use it because it's a really nice colour. So I'm going to take that almost to the tip of each leaf. Like that. And then, I'm going to grab this which was the um, light yellow ochre to finish off the tip of each leaf and just blend in and that will tie it into the um, bee a little bit I am going to go over the top again of the whole thing with the green just to try and make it stand out it's because it's quite dark because of the uh, the lines being drawn on each leaf like that. Now on the edge of each branch, just realize you can't really see what I'm doing. Assuming that I can't move my book very much more. Well, there we go. So I want to make each branch look slightly more three-dimensional. So I'm gonna pick um yeah I think I will use the um walnut brown that we've used already to just go around the edge very slightly so almost on top of the black line and just extending it slightly on every single branch this will take some time and we'll do it after I've done the green because I think um, it works better that way I've tried it before and hopefully you can see it gives it a slightly more three-dimensional look. You don't have to do this little bit if you want to keep it just plain and simple. So that's it done on there and this bit it hasn't been done and I think it just looks a little bit more finished especially when you zoom out a little bit and see it from a distance. Now as I say I'm going to put some pastel in the background all the way around but not on this center bit we've got the story written in there um i'm going oh sorry wrong way i'm going to choose a a green which matches this color as close as i can get 
and uh, try and get it reasonably smooth. Now because polys don't smudge it should be quite easy for me to rub it onto the page um, and might need to think about a fixative to stop it spreading onto the facing page. I may or may not use one. Um, I'll have a think about the weather because I need to use it outside so I'll wait and see. But uh, but that's um, that's all the basics really for that page so I hope that's given you a little bit of confidence and to have a go at it or some ideas on how to cut or a bee really um, as well although we did a bee yesterday video if I put them out in order um, anyway so um, that's that so I hope that was handy for you I will um, do some more complex pages from the book later but I just wanted to start with an easy one for me and for you really so uh, that's it so thank you so much for watching um, I'm going to go away and have fun finishing off this page and have some chill time and uh, and happy colouring <laughs>